Hey everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part two of our Tamiya 124 Ford Focus WRC 02 video build. So we're back part two today. We're going to deal with all the running gears. So we're going to deal with the, the chassis, suspension, the drivetrain, the brakes, the wheels. Um, I've worked in combination with the interior on this one. So I'll have part three out very soon as well. But I thought for today we'll put all the focus on the interior, uh, sorry, the running gear. So it's quite a nice kit, this, with the running gear and that. There's some quite nice detail you can add to it. So I try to be as thorough as possible uh, where I can. Might have the wrong colour in places. I'm sure somebody will tell me. And I do ask through the build what a few things are. So I'm sure a few of you are going to tell me those as well. So let's dive straight in with the build and get cracking. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, the obligatory cutting off parts and cleaning them up. I feel like we've been here before. Don't know why, a strange sense of deja vu, but we're gonna cut off all the various suspension components, including the wheels and the chassis, and get them all cleaned up and prepped, ready for primer. So using our Tamiya side cutters, a combination of ultimate thinny sticks, sponges, and polishers, we're gonna get everything cleaned up. So we've got a 400 thinny stick here. I'm gonna get rid of all these sprue points on the edge of the chassis and the front and the rear. Of course, if they're a bit big, we can trim them off closer with our Tamiya side cutters. And then deal with the rest of it with our sander, like so. And then on parts like this with round edges, we come with a 220 sponge. That way we don't flatten the edge. There's a seam all the way front to back on the exhaust. Anything else where there's a sprue locator point, we'll deal with with the 400 thinny stick. And then once we're happy, we can hit it with the sponge again and then come in with our buffer polisher and get it polished up back to nice shiny plastic. So this exhaust can only uh, masking multitude of different colors, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First of all though, we're gonna open up the actual exhaust tip itself because it isn't open on the kit exhaust. So I've got a, I'm gonna guess that's about a 1.5 mil drill bit in our Tamiya pin vise. I'm just gonna slowly open it up wider. Products I use in my videos, in the description of the video, there's a big long list of all the products I use. So if you see something and you wanna know where it is, go look in there, you should be able to find it. And there's even some links to where you can purchase them from as well. Most of the Tammy tools you can get for myself at the UMP. Again, onto the sponge sanders on the brake calipers. And any areas where we can't go get a sander in, we've got a Suji Burrito detail file in there to get rid of any seams and what have you. And then we come in with our sander again and remove these. And again, the buffer afterwards and get it all back to plastic. So on the CV gaiters, we've got some seams and they're quite tricky to get. So using the old Tamiya Extra Thin uh, EMA Plasti Weld Mix, we're gonna brush it on over the seams, leave it a couple of minutes, let that soften the plastic, melt the plastic, and then we use the brush to brush through and over the gaiters, and that will get rid of the seam for us and out of the way. Uh, on other parts where we don't use a sander, you can use a knife blade and scrape off the seam should you wish. Be careful on thinner parts like this, they can break, so be nice and gentle, don't be too harsh. Once we got all the parts cleaned up, we can mount them all for primer. So using various methods from white tack, CA glue, to holes, already in, like so. And we can drill holes for mounting as well. We'll get everything mounted up and ready for primer. So I cleaned up and mounted all the parts for the running gear in the interior to do it all in one go, but I'm just gonna show the running gear today and we'll separate all the interior into a video next time. So as you see there, just put a one mil hole in an inconspicuous part of the suspension strut and we push in our cocktail stick. 
And on the chassis, we're going to paint the engine separately. So we've got a reverse tweezer clamp on there to enable us to prime it properly. And there's all the parts all ready to go. They're on our U-Star foam pad stand and ready for some primer. So today's choice of primer is Tamiya White Fine Surface Primer. We've decanted it out the spray can and we're going to thin it about 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. We're going through the 0.35 Ultimate Apex Airbrush at about 18 PSI. And I'm just going to put a couple of coats down on the chassis, uh, the roll cage, the wheels, etc. Um, obviously, like I say, I've, I've painted up and primed all the interior parts as well. So I kind of got to split them up. So if you see a few interior bits, just bear in mind why I'm doing it. So a couple of light coats. First coat, we just want to mist it on, get a nice overall um, coat all over. We don't want to hose it on yet, um, but the last coat we will put on a little bit wetter because I found this primer does like to go on a touch wetter. It's supposed to be sprayed, so that will inherently go on wet. Um, just build up slowly and you can get it wetter in its latter stages. It tends to dry better and self levels better. And like I say, while we're here doing the white, we might as well do the roll cage as well for the next part of the build. So roll cages are quite tricky to paint because there's so many different angles, so many little parts. Most of the paint will pass through because of the tubular style of the roll cage, but we need to get a prime. So it's a case of going all around, rotating it until it's done. Wheels, again, standard wheel prep. We do the centers and then we come in from the sides and uh, just get everywhere nicely primed. And again, we leave five, 10 minutes and then come back and do a second coat. Two coats is probably gonna be enough on all this. We can come back in with a slightly heavier coat because we're putting white on white, the coverage is good. So lead us to one side, five minutes later, come in. And as you can see, we're putting a bit more paint down now and get it all primed up. So we do it underneath the chassis here, inside the car as well, because there's no separate tub on this. We've got some masking to do to the floor pan underneath. But there we go. Nice even coat all the way around, gives a nice base for our paint, and that can be left to dry overnight till the next day. And again, give the roll cage another coat off camera as well. Wheels are done off camera too. And we come in, we've spilled some paint. Why have we spilled paint? Ah, because we don't have the lid on. Ta da! There we go. Now we've got the lid on. We won't spill any paint. So we've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black and we're going to prime all the white parts. So again, a couple of coats, build it up. Covers really well, does cover quite quick. I've noticed lately, uh, not quite thinning it as much. It's probably about 60, 40. We've missed probably leveling thinner. Makes it cover a little bit better. You see how well it's just covered on the white there. No bother whatsoever. Again, we're pointing the, through the 0.35 apex, about 18 PSI. Um, everything here is going to get a light coat and then come with a second coat to get everything nicely primed up. So you could leave this as black if you wanted. And I have done in the past, but we're going to semi-gloss black this. Uh, just add a bit of tonal difference underneath. Well, like I said, make sure you get all those angles, all of the little recesses and corners and what have you. It's very easy to miss. And then once that's dried, a couple of hours later, we're coming with some Tamiya LP5. Thin 60, 70% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinning with Retarder. And just put a couple of light coats down. Doesn't need a huge amount of paint. Again, because we're putting black over black, the coverage is really good. The LP paints are very, very forgiving to use, but don't hose them on. But just put enough down to get your coverage in a couple of coats. Tamiya TS17 Silver now. We're going to spray up all the transmission and some of the other parts that need spraying up. Uh, again, this was decanted, thin 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. We're through the 0.3, sorry, 0.2 mil apex this time. At about 18 psi. This is my metals airbrush. Uh, we're just going to go around and get this down um, nice and evenly all around. Leave it to the side to one side for five minutes. Come back to a second coat, and that will do us. While we're there, we'll spray a few of the parts up. We've got the radiator to do. So we get the base color down there. So basically we're base painting everything in its base color. We'll detail paint everything later on. 
There you go. As you see, it covers really quick. I do like TF sprays. They are very, very forgiving. Now, we've got a mix here. I'm going to try and remember what this is. This is Tamiya Titanium Silver with a touch of gold. It's in the LP range of paints, and for the life of me, I cannot remember the colours. <laughs> if you need to know, think on and ask, because I do have the bottle, just don't have it right to hand right now. Uh, but it's a mix just to give a slightly gold-tinted titanium, which is a colour I like to use. I'm going to use this on the discs as well. We'll hand paint the calipers later on. So you get a couple of light coats, one coat down, put it to one side to dry, come back five, ten minutes later, add a second coat, and you'll see that colour build up really nice. The metallics and the LPs and the TSs are beautiful, nice fine pigments, really good coverage, and yeah, a nice colour range as well. So again, popping down, second coat on the exhaust, second coat on the brake discs as well. And there we go. Now we've got some Tamiya TS26. Again, decanted, off-gassed. Thin 20% with Tamiya. Lacquer thinner with Retarder. 0.35mm Ultimate Apex again. 18 PSI again. And again, we're going to put a couple of coats down. We'll put a thinner coat on to begin with. Again, we're white on white, so it's going to cover a lot faster. Put it to one side to dry. And then come back and add a second coat later on. We're going to do the inside of the cockpit and the chassis itself. We'll just get a coat down, let it dry, come back, and we'll put a heavier second coat on later on. If it would been a different colour primer, probably need more coats of paint, but because we put white over white and black over black, the coverage is really good, and it really doesn't need any more coats than a couple, in my opinion. Obviously, it's up to you how much paint you put down, uh, but this is more than adequate. For myself wheels exactly the same ts26 couple of coats so as you can see we focus on the outside of the rim coming into the center uh nut on the wheel uh leave again five minutes to dry another coat on the chassis another coat on the wheels getting all the angles on the wheels and while we're here as well we might as well try and get the uh, roll cage as done as you can see off camera so as you can see i angle it up down side to side, circular motions on the airbrush, and that gives us perfect coverage of paint. So that's our chassis white, our wheels white, and our roll cage done. Fuel and interior components do, which we'll cover in part three. Brake calipers, cause alpha gold. So I picked up LP, that looks like 62, I'm gonna guess. I may be wrong, I think it is. And give this a decent coat of paint now because we're using lacquer on lacquer if we keep brushing over it we will reactivate the silver paint underneath so we're kind of loading the brush up not with tons of paint but enough as you see i'm not wiping the paint off enough that i can get everything down in just one swipe of the brush without repeatedly going over so we paint all the calipers the same then we're going to do the drive shafts in lp61 which is metallic gray Paint those up. You could mask and paint these should you wish, but I think it's a bit of a waste of time where you can brush paint perfectly adequately. Just like I say, bear in mind they're all lacquers and you are painting it over lacquer paint. So don't keep brushing over the same parts or you'll just end up with a streaky paint finish. Load the brush up, get the paint on, get it down nice and smooth and it'll work pretty well. Same colour for the hubs of the brakes as well. Some careful painting, and once you get your brush lined up, you can spin the cocktail stick in your hand, keep the brush still, and it will follow the contour of the hub perfectly. And there you go. Simple and easy. Again, you can mask these. We've done it before. We've used our display circle cutter to cut these out, um, to do the hub and the brake caliper, but sometimes... Brush painting, it's quite nice to do, and it's a bit quicker. Might not give you as quite a good finish, but for this, it's more than adequate. Now we've got some model colour black, and we're going to thin this with a drop or two of water. Give it a good mix up using our Windsor & Newton Series 7 brush. Just 
There we go. And we're going to do our little CV Gator. I call them CV Gator drive shaft boots. I don't know what you're going to call them. Uh, I call them Gators because I think that's what they're quite commonly referred to in the UK. I'm probably totally wrong. God only knows. But either way, we're painting these things up. Is what we're doing. Sure, some of the chat's going to tell me, no, Paul, you are wrong. They are this. But hey, they're getting painted black, is what we're doing. So, four of them to each side, one on either end of the drive shaft, and nice, simple, quick, easy job. And then we're going to use some model air for layer, just add some detail to some raised detail on the edge of the disc, like so. On a cocktail stick, dab it in, touch it on, just to add a little bit of detail to what we've already done. So repeat that for all the four discs. Steady hands required here. If you miss, you're going to put paint where you don't want it. it. Does not always look good. If you're more happy, you use a paintbrush. For me, I like to use the um, cocktail stick. A little bit too much paint there, Paul. No idea what we're painting there. I think we're doing the living room walls with that. And we're going to do our subframe. So these have been base painted in LP5, uh, semi gloss black, and we're going to paint them silver just as the color call out call for the instructions. The model color, sorry, model air silver covers really well. Not always the smoothest of paints. I think you could probably do a thinning with a touch of water sometimes. I kind of wish I'd done it on this, but we're committed now, so we'll go with the flow, literally. I'm just going to base paint all these arms up on the front and rear subframes. On top and underneath, steady hand is required. Way too much brush there, I should get a roller and give the uh, modeling cave a, a go over as well, probably paint the whole thing with that lot. There we go. Like I say, steady hand, good brush, good paint, and it'd be done in no time. Ejected pin marks under there, but they're underneath. You're never going to see them. Suspension. So we've got these base painted in LP5. We're going to add some silver detail below, and then we're going to paint the springs uh, a different color as well. So we've got some reservoirs on the side of the shock as well, and these call out for a bit of a strange color combination in a little bit which we'll get to very shortly. Now I've got some LP20 good metal. Not the color I wanted, but I ran out of LP61. And Alan told me, they're virtually the same color. And I said, that's a good idea. I used that, painted it, and it's a completely different color. Like night and day different color. Thankfully they look okay, but again, thank you Alan, who's the guy that recommended using the flocking in the spray booth. Cheers mate. More good advice. So, yes, Alan's probably sat at home laughing now. But, yeah, it's not a bad colour, to be fair. It could have been a lot worse, but it's definitely not the same as LP61. It, it's night and day, totally different, a lot darker. But it'll do the job on this. So, uh, <laughs> one of those things. I'm chatting away here. I'm probably going to hang out with all the guys chatting away. So, if you see me pausing, that's me answering the question. So, bear with me. Uh, but we're going to detail paint all these up, all four of them. Nice and gently, and then we get those reservoir. Um, I'm assuming like a gas mm, canister, I want to say expansion. I don't know. What do you lot know? You'll tell me. Now it calls for. Let me think. It was. I think it was ten part clear red, one part um, like gold. Very very strange color. So I followed the time instructions, couldn't really find a reference online. I was finding aftermarket WRC shocks that were purple. So whether that's what Tammy was going for, and this made a kind of purpley pink color. So I just went with it and we used it. So we've mixed up the clear red with the gold. I'm just going to give it all a good mix up. Like so. so I think that's what they were going for. And we're going to paint it all up. So we're going to leave the silver 
in the mounts where we painted them last time. I'm just going to detail paint all the other parts. Now, I should have zoomed in. Sometimes I get a bit distracted. This camera is rolling all day long. There was like 10 and a half hours of footage for this episode that we're going to whittle down to 44 minutes and 3 seconds on the actual footage. So it's just going. And sometimes, I'll be honest, I forget the camera's there. I'm just away in the world of my own modelling, chatting to the guys, listening to music. And sometimes I do forget to zoom in on parts. It can be quite important for you to see. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just detail painting those parts. Being nice and careful. Again, I'm using lacquers. So load the brush up. And try and brush the part as little as possible. There is a technique to using these, but you can brush paint them fairly well. Now the exhaust needs painting up in several different colours. We've got the base colour, we painted it in. It then wants a buff colour, it then wants white. So we need to mask off, paint the buff colour, then mask off and paint the white. So using some of the Tamiya 1, 2 and 3 mil tapes to mask off the edges. And then we'll infill those with the larger Tamiya tapes in a minute. So just some careful masking using our tweezers and the instructions of reference. Once we're happy, we can infill the areas with some larger Tamiya tape. And what we've got painted here, we're going to spray up in buff. Whilst we're at the spray booth, we're also going to paint up the engine. So this took quite a while to mask using a multitude of smaller paint parts, paint masks, sorry. I'm getting I'm trying to say masking tape is what I'm trying to say. And this is the end result after probably about a good 40 minutes of masking. One carefully masked engine, ready for some uh, paint. So, a little bit fiddly, but worth it in the long run because it does look better than being brush painted. Now, these parts I did contemplate masking and spraying. So, we've got these in the back, I'm assuming. Are these fuel tanks? Probably wrong again because, no, they're not going to be fuel tanks, are they? Because the fuel tank will be in the car as a cell. So, what are these? Someone's going to tell me in the chat. I know you are. You're watching. You're like, oh my god, he doesn't know. I'll tell him. Quick. So, they're painted up. We've then got to paint up the center for the heat shield for the exhaust system. So, that can be done later on. We've got some Tamiya LP76, I believe it is. Which is buff. We've got some Mr. Color Rapid Thinner because we want a nice matte finish of this. Just add a little splash. There we go. In there, we'll mix it up and put a couple of nice thin coats down. This is going to dry super, super fast and give us a super, super matte finish, which is just what we want. So, again, through the 0.35 Apex, 18 PSI, I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down. We don't need to go right over the silencer box because that's going to be white, but we do need to go up to it. And then the rear section of the exhaust is going to be completely uh, covered. So I'm guessing the buff is like a ceramic heat shield coating, uh, as is the white, uh, to keep the heat dissipated away from the uh, engine uh, engine bay and cockpit. We've got some TS-17 again. Again, UMP Apex, 18 PSI, 0.35 needle. I'm going to put a couple of coats down on this engine, getting all the different angles and recesses. We've masked it up fully so we don't get any silver paint where we don't want it. And just some careful spraying. We've got our engine bay coloured up nicely. I do like the test sprays. Like I say, they are one of my favourite paints. I've got a lot of them. I've been using them for quite some time. The coverage is really good. The pigments are a good size in most of the colours. Um... Bit of a pain of being in rattle cans, but they're not a real chore to decant. They thin nicely and airbrush really well, but they do like to go on a little bit wetter. So get a couple of mist coats down and then come in with some wetter coats because it does like the, to settle better. As the LPs, like not as wet, they can have an adverse effect. So people say they're the same paint. I personally don't think they are. They spray differently. They dry differently. They smell different. Different characteristics. They're very similar. They are both lacquers, uh, but they are different, in my opinion. So we've got some LP3 Tamiya Flat White. We're just giving it all a quick buzz up because I don't use this flat white very often. 
so it is completely separated in the bowl. I'm going to pop a bit in our medicine cup, and then we're going to grab that Mr. Hobby rapid thinner again, because again, we want a nice math finish. Again, just in it by eye, no measuring whatsoever. And a couple of light coats. And there we go. Same apex, 0 0.35, 18 uh, PSI. A couple of light coats. That's it, put it aside, five minutes, put another coat on, and I'll leave it to dry fully. And here we are, freshly unmasked. Perfect, just the way the instructions call out. Head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and Lee's business, because without alternate modeling products, there would not be any international scale modeler, and all the videos we put out there, and the Facebook page, and the forum we run. We stock loads and loads of modeling products, including all our own products of our Apex Airbrush, our pigments, primers, sanders, thinner and cleaner tools, our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. Now, time for a wash, Tamiya Black Panel Liner. Uh, we're going to thin this a bit today, so put a, a few drops in one of our UMP paint pots. I'm going to add a couple of drops of Sansador, uh, odorless mineral spirits from Tamiya, not Tamiya, Windsor and Newton. And we're going to thin this a touch and just give everything a wash. If it's got a raised or recessed detail, it's getting a wash. That's how we work. So it's a case of going round, giving everything that hold a wash a wash. We let it dry, we come back later on, wipe off the excess, and it adds a bit of depth to everything we've built. Uh, it certainly makes things look a lot more interesting than if they didn't have a wash. And it's definitely a step I see a lot of modelers miss out. So well worth doing. This Tamiya wash isn't the easiest to source. You have to get it from Europe or the Far East because it's not readily imported into the UK, which is a bit of a shame. But just one of those things. Like I say, if it holds a wash, it's getting a wash, and that's what we're going to do. Obviously, there's no real point in washing black parts, because it's not going to show. So for anything we want to wash in black, we'll use grey. But thinning it, just let the capillary reaction, let it flow a bit more. It can be a little bit thick otherwise, and you spend half your time removing it. Whereas if it's being thinned a bit, the capillary reaction pulls it away and gets it right into all those areas where we want them. And again, on suspension components, this is all dried now. They've been left to dry overnight. Standards practice for me. Usually finish 7, 8 o'clock one evening. And when I come back the next day, 9, 10 a.m., everything is ready to go. A little bit of detail painting even on the engine. I'm just going to paint the sump black. So we're going to brush paint it with some model color black. Thinned with a drop of water. Just follow the instructions. To paint it up, bit of careful brush painting, quite nice to do every now and then. Can be a bit frustrating as well because you can make a right mess of what you're doing. But if you take your time, we're using water-based paint over lacquer, so we can get it off any issues. It'll almost just wipe itself off. And then once that's dried fully, we can come in and put a wash on our engine as well. As you can see, I've brush painted the heat shield through the transmission tunnel as well. Use the Vallejo Model Air Silver. That we used before try to be as neat as possible with the brush but we're just going to apply a wash to all this engine bay then we'll let it all dry i think i'll let it dry overnight actually this time and then we'll come back the following morning and remove all the wash so this adds a bit of depth just adds a bit of more realism to what you're doing or as real as you can get it um, it certainly looks better than just leaving it uh, painted. And then once the silver paint is dry in the middle, we're going to do the drive shaft, prop shaft, whatever you want to call it, um, in the LP20 again. Good metal. Again, loading the brush up. Nice, careful brushwork. Not going over the same parts too many times. And there we go. 
Decals, so the wheels are fully dried now. Uh, they're not cleared. We're not going to clear the wheels at all. We've got a nice gloss white finish already. We've got three different types of decals to put on. So referring to our instructions on the left, we're going to apply them as and where they're required. So just get everything orientated the right way. Get your decals on nice and straight. Quite a major part of the vehicle this. So definitely worth taking the time making sure this is right. The wheels are very prominent. They're one of the first things you'll look at. So we're just using some tap water here. It's not heated at all. Because we're only using a few decals, it's not really worth heating. Uh, the decals stuck off the back and paper just fine. No issues at all. Tammy decals can be a bit troublesome at times. Most of the times they seem to play a game, play ball. But sometimes they can be an absolute nightmare. These ones seemed really good because, well, they were cartograph. So we know we're not going to go wrong there. These have been Tamiya's own. They might have been a bit troublesome. Uh, but cartograph, pretty trouble free. And um, we know we're going to get them down with no issues. So there's the main BBS ones. On. like so then got some Ford logos to go on as well this is the last one going in place so we get everything lined up so literally put all the decals on then we go around straighten them all up remove any excess water from behind them and then hit it with a decal solution so we got the Oz logo sorry I thought it was BBS it's not as Oz OZ then we've got the Ford logo and then there's another one to go underneath as well so this is the other decal as well you just pop that in place it goes on the side of the rim just take your time with the decals follow the call out properly make sure you get them all in the right place especially before committing to decal solutions i think these are magneso decals if i remember right so we get them on the side so they face outwards and we've got all these to pop in place. So just take your time. Pay attention to what you're doing. Careful placement. Tammy decal tweezers are invaluable in my opinion. A very, very helpful tool. Flat bladed so they don't damage the decals. But with still a nice rounded point to help you position them. Definitely one of my favourite Tammy tools. Well worth the investment. And then once we're happy everything's in place, we've got some Ultimate Strong. I know it's decal solution to use from when we did the body. If you're not sure, always start with the least strong solution you have. If it's UMP, that'll be the normal. And work your way up until you're happy. For me, I went straight to the strong because after decal on the body, I know exactly what they require. If you need to make any adjustments, you can do it very quickly. If you're very careful and confident. If not, leave things be. I uh, just have to accept the decal's fate if it's slightly off. But there we go. They're going to be set to one side to dry. And then we've got some Mr. Let me have a think. Is this? It's Mr. Colour. Let me grab the colour and have a look. Uh, C61 Burn Time. See, I'm a little bit off today because I've lost my uh, LP61 Metallic Black. I've had to resort to using different colours. I can't remember them. Luckily, they're right in front of me still. <laughs> so, LP, sorry, it's not. It's C61, Mr. Colour. So, we're going to use a toothpick to apply our road wheel nuts. So, we're just dabbing it in the paint and very, very lightly. It might take a couple of dabs to get the whole thing covered. But keep it at an angle. Keep it from the edge of the wheel. You don't want to get this on the white. And there we go. Get all those done. And once we're happy with that... We can put them to one side and then we do our Brembo or, sorry, not Brembo, the Brambo, Brambo on this. It looks like an A to me, not an A. I think Tammy might have done that to get around some uh, copyright issues or logo issues, but I'm pretty sure they say Brambo on them. But from this scale, from a distance, you're not going to notice this. It adds a little bit of detail to it. You can see the brake discs and calipers through the alley wheel. But you can't really make out what they say. So it's not the end of the world. But if you've got these, let me know. I'm pretty sure they say Brambo. And again, centre, I've painted in black. And now I've got a gold 
paint marker pen. I'm just going to paint the inner center of the hub. So put a little coat on, let that dry, and then come back and put a second one on a little bit later. These paint marker pens are really good. Very useful for doing jobs like that. Our tires have a seam all the way through the middle. I don't always get rid of these, but I have started doing it. So I thought we might as well do it on this. So we've got a 1200 240 your ultimate sponge now and we're using the 240 side the more abrasive to deal with that seam it doesn't take a lot of work but it is messy it does go everywhere you end up with like a rubberized powdered dust all over your bench but a step worth doing it makes them look more realistic uh, but only you can decide if you want to do this or not. I don't always, but I am starting to do it more and more. And then with the wheels and tyres mounted together. Which are looking very nice, really nice Oz wheels. We can then do our tyre decals. So we've got just very, very tiny uh, P0 logos to do. Very, very small. A little bit fiddly, that is for sure. So once we're all in place, grab our UMP Strong again. As you can see, very, very small decals. Hit them with the UMP Strong and then just leave them be, let them dry. And that is our wheels ready for a wash. There we go. So again, same as before, slightly thinned down wash. We're going to get the centre hub, the bolts themselves, and we'll let that dry. And then again, the next day, we'll use uh, some Santador or just mineral spirits to remove any excess. And again, just adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of interest to the wheels themselves. There we go. So the following morning, Sunday live show. I'm doing this live and... Uh, Multitasking, modeling, streaming, filming at the same time, presenting, asking questions. I'm a man of many talents. I'm only joking. I'm, I've got none at all. So we've got some odorless mineral spirits from Santador here. I'm just on a cotton bud, wiping off all the excess wash nice and gently. And just even on the brake disc and caliper, you can see it just adds a lot more depth, fills in all those grooves lines, and all the rivet detail, bolt detail. Detail on the gearboxes and diff and what have you. It just adds a nice bit of detail to it. We've also added a grey wash to all the black parts as well. Just to add a bit of detail. And it does work really well. It's a time. It's effort well spent doing. There's all our parts now separate for the running gear. So suspension, drivetrain, steering, subframes, brakes, wheels, etc. So we're going to concentrate on this today. So first in is our exhaust. Two locating points at the back couple of dabs of CA glue in place and then we've got our rear differential and drive shaft prop shaft making sure it's all in place properly like so just needs pushing over a touch there and there we go that's that in place and then we've got our rear sorry front one in as well as you can see the wash really adds depth to that silver just makes it look a lot more interesting. And I do, it's not a criticism, but I do see a lot of modelers don't add washes. It's such a game-changing thing to do. It just adds depth to everything that you build. It really does, and it's well worth trying. It really is. And we're just going to assemble all the components. We've got the anti-roll bar in, as per the instructions, really straightforward assembly. You're just going to make sure you get things like these struts the right way around, the brake calipers and discs are right way round. That's it, really. So just follow the instructions, and you can't go wrong, really. Just take your time. There's no rush. There we go. Once we're happy with that, put some glue in the mountain brackets for this subframe. And we get the front in, and then we'll lift up the back and get each side in before we press it down fully home, like so. There we go, quite nice and simple. All looking good. And then same on the other side. Make sure everything's straight and lined up because otherwise this will dictate how your wheels sit. So make sure everything is straight. And 
like so. A little dab of CA glue. Pop it at the top. Or the bottom, sorry. And then lift up that frame and just pop the parts in place like so. There we go. Job done. Front suspension now with attached steering rack. I'm trying to put it in the wrong way. I'm going to realise any second now. And there we go. Now I've got it in the right way. So with attached those to the front and uh, the back of each one, we'll pop it in, line it up. Obviously, this is a movable component. We don't want to glue the pieces in. We want to let this subframe piece hold it all in. So a few dabs on the locating points of CA glue. Line it up. So I always try and get the back piece on first. Get that down and then wiggle all the front bits around to get them all lined up. And in place can be a little bit fiddly to do. So patience is key and try not to get any glue on your fingers and then transfer them elsewhere because it does make a right mess if you're not careful. As you can see one of mine's fell out. We're having a calamity already. So if one falls out, get one in place, stick the frame down. You can lift the arms up ever so slightly to get things in place. So we get one side in place. This little arm just needs a little persuasion pushing in on this side. I'm just checking the instructions, make sure I've got this the right way around. And I do. So we're just going to push it with our tweezers gently until it pushes home. And then we'll spin it around. Make sure the back's in place. Oh, which it was, but it fell out. As you can see, it can be fiddly. So just take your time, don't panic. If you use a thick, medium thick or thick super glue, you get a bit of working time with it. So don't be panicking. Once you've got it all lined up, you can pop both uh, suspension parts in. Get it all lined up. And this running gear is looking really good. Quite happy with this. We spent a bit of time doing this, so quite happy with the result. And then we've got this little cross member on the front to pop in. Like I say, very straightforward kit to build. Quite a lot of interesting parts to do, a lot of interesting parts to paint up. Actually quite an interesting model to build. build. And there we go. Quick inspection, make sure everything moves, everything's straight, everything's where we want it, everything's in the right place. Refer to instructions, make sure everything looks good. Once we're happy. Now the tires are handed. Look at the instructions that will show you which way around they go. As you can see, I'm just making sure. Got one on the back correct. Making sure the next one matches it. Like so. There we are. And then on the other side, when you're doing this, just put a little bit of pressure on the mounting points and then a little bit of pressure on the wheel and just spin it slowly. It doesn't need a huge amount of pressure to get it in place. If you apply too much, you'll break it. And then make sure you haven't pushed the tire past the rim. You want it just sitting ever so slightly proud of the rim. So spin them around, make sure they're all good. Like so. Really nice wheels, these. I really do like these. They suit the car. And this white on the blue body is going to look very, very nice, which I'll be honest, I couldn't resist a test fit. But yeah, really nice rims. Sits well. Happy with that running gear. Looks really good. Could weather the chassis more if you wanted, but we're not. Now, one thing I did forget to do doing the chassis is we're supposed to mask up and paint these outer sills they're not really the sills but they are in the body color and i totally forgot and i had a vote on the live show and everyone said to leave them and then somebody came up with the idea of using a marker pen and i remember they had these gun down markers in this blue which is a near identical match for the color so i just took the shell off brushed these down the side with the, as a, with the pen and it was a very very good mask uh, match so say just disassembling everything masking it all and spraying it what would have taken us probably a good hour or so to do took about two minutes with the body on look at that the blue with the white wheels looks fantastic our paint match underneath looks really really good happy with that and there we go this is where we're at today 
Okay, so there we go. So as I said, quite a nice car to build this one. Uh, I know this kit has issues. I know it has issues with the glass. And the running gear can be a little bit troublesome to get to line. You've got to be careful with those rear suspension struts that you get them straight. Uh, or as you can, put the wheels off on uh, an odd toe in or out. So be careful of that one. Pay attention when you're doing it and it shouldn't really go wrong. So like I say, I filmed a lot of the interior. A lot of the interior parts are, let me think, they are actually detail painted kind of. I just need to do um, a few things for the belt and what have you. So part three will be up very, very soon. I've got plans for lots of videos to do. Um, there's going to be one up tomorrow or today, actually, because it's Monday. You're going to see this. This is Sunday evening. I'm doing this now. Uh, but this is planned to be uploaded Monday morning. Uh, I've got a nice delivery coming tomorrow. Something I want to review for the channel. So that should be an interesting one. And I've got a few uh, videos planned showing future builds and plans uh, for things I want to do uh, sometime this year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. Uh, any answers to the questions I ask, pop them down below. Make sure you give the video a sub, thumbs up. Uh, and comment as well. Like I say, I do appreciate all the comments. I don't reply to them all, but I read every single one. And it's all you guys and girls out there that spur me along with these builds with your positive thoughts and comments. So please, please continue to comment on the video. Um, also, if you'd like to help support the channel, my Patreon link is in the description down below. The Patreon link is what keeps these videos going. So it's a well worth... Um, well we're considering supporting and my paypal me link is there as well and as always check out natasha scale model facebook page and forum umpretail.com my paul ism facebook page the live of the bench page the offer hangout group the gb page as well and in the description down below is a big long list of all the products i use in my videos so if you see anything you should be able to find them in there i'll catch you all very soon enjoy the rest of your monday i'm going to enjoy the rest of my Sunday, and catch you all later. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.